everyone. Uh, thank you so much for inviting us over to Big Al's. Um, I have lots of memories about this location because this is where I bought my first aquarium. So it all started, right? About 20 odd years ago. So we're shooting this video right now just on the verge of Christmas. And then the day after Christmas in Canada is Boxing Day. And Boxing Day is the biggest sale event in, um, for Big Al's in the whole year. That's right. So uh, we're looking at 25% uh, flyers off on everything. And uh, I came down here just to maybe focus on some of the really nice things that you have planned for your customers for um, Monday. And with this said, let's take a look at the store and uh, see what you have. Okay, so we've got Gary and his baby. I've uh, been admiring this aquarium for a very long time. And I think you really spent a lot of time on it and the res end result shows. So uh, Gary, maybe you can kind of walk us through a little bit of uh, maintenance but and the vision for this aquarium? Sure, so um, you know initially our plan was sort of just to set it up and have a nice mixed reef. Yep. Um, we've sort of gotten to the point where it's, it's actually becoming quite mature. You can see some of the pieces, the rainbow loom, the leathers. We have yes. a nice little colony of our zoas and pallies. We have a nice one. garden, the, the Ghani garden over here. Mm -hmm. We're doing a little bit of acclimation with a few of our more sensitive Acropora. Yep. Um, but at the end of the day, it's now sort of become one of our grow out systems. So we actually spend a lot of time growing out the pieces, making frags, trying to share uh, with our customers, of course. Uh, some really nice, unique pieces that they may not be able to come by, um, you know, in your, your average visit to your local pet shops and things like that. So some strawberry uh, acropora, the shortcakes, yep. uh, even the rainbow loom, which is becoming a little more popular these days. Uh, lots of tenuous, a spatulata, which has just been put in over the last couple of days. Uh, really some great pieces, but still sort of going through a little bit of a development stage. Uh, a lot of our frags are starting to become colonies, as you can see. Yes. We spend a, a fair amount of time working yeah, on the, the system itself. It, it is uh, set up with uh, some automated features. Mm -hmm. uh, the nice thing about the reefer systems is they give you the nice ATO uh, we have a, a oil skimmer that we're using on the system. Yep, I have the it's same plumbed one. into our, our skim breeze, which a lot of people are familiar with these mm. days. So this uh, is for pH, right? I mean, yeah, the, the skim breeze really, you know, it's reducing CO2 for us uh, yeah. all, all the time. It's not something we have to really worry about. It just does it for us. So sometimes in an enclosed system, you get a little more CO2 from all the people in the house or the dogs mm -hmm. and things like that. We get a lot of people in here. The CO2 in this system uh, is a little bit high, so that's one of the reasons why we like yes. to use the skim breeze. Yep. Uh, basic cups, I try not to do, you know, in this environment when we have customers, uh, we have stock to do, it's a little challenging, so I do a, a quick swap out with my floss. I like that idea. Instead of the so. reef mat, which the reef mat is really, really handy. Yep. The reef mat sometimes gets rid of a lot of these squirts yep. that they're, they're manageable, they help with some of the conditions as we know, but they can be a little bit, uh, you know, unwanted when you get too many of them. Mm -hmm. We have a carbon and a, and a phos band located in our two cups here as well. We try to keep our phosphates around 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.03. Yep. So with, uh, again, with this type of system, we don't have to have a reactor. They're, they're not tumbling, they're going right through the water and it's really doing an excellent job with us. So we just, we're leaving it, we're keeping it simple. If we were having troubles uh, managing our phosphate, we would change that, but we're not, so we're leaving it, keeping it simple. Nice, and this is all the supplementation that yeah. you do for the tank, right? Yeah, so we like to use a lot of our stuff is gonna be fauna marin based. Yep. Actually, it's starting to dose right now the calcium. So just uh, dosed a little bit of calcium. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our big three on there, our mag, our calcium, and our, our buffer, our KH, our alkalinity, whatever you guys like to call it. We're also running our, our fourth head with our amin, which is our daily vitamin and ah, So you have your uh, aminos on an automatic dose, right? right? That's so. right. It's a daily additive with these aminos. Yeah time consuming if we don't have the time it's nice to have it done it's beautiful you know fauna marin really unlike some of the other companies 
a, a weekly additive with our color elements. So that's yes. easy to do. We can do that on our own. And of course, the supplementation for our feeding, it's sort of done randomly, just depending on who's here and what needs to be done. So you, uh, so the traces and uh, aminos are pretty much automatic and on schedule, that's but right. the that's feeding right. is a little bit uh, more ad hoc. We don't like to have too many people touching the aquarium. Uh, it's better if yeah. just a couple of people do it. So myself and my, my coworker, Ron, generally do most of the feeding or the supplementation. Um, that's beautiful. That's a nice gaunny, yeah. yeah. That was a little tiny frag less than a year ago. Really? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, everything is nice and, and grown in and you've got some beautiful uh, dragons. I haven't seen the green one uh, in a while. So personally, I haven't seen this one. So They're beautiful. They're only about two weeks, maybe a week and a half old, mm -hmm. still going through acclimation, but you can really see some nice color and already yeah. a lot of growth. You can see the fresh growth on the red dragon there. Yeah, I see some encrusting already, which is beautiful. I think I'm going to be getting in line for some of those uh, guys. So one of the things we actually did recently is we, we added these Reef Wave 45s. Yeah. The gyro, gyro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, yeah. we like the heavy flow with these, which actually increases the density of our acropora, mm. and you get you get more steady growth rate, and it makes them actually a lot stronger. Yeah, you can see that here. You pretty much just bombarding with with the flow. It's and, That's right. and yet you know there's no issue with the tissue. That's right. Uh, everything is just can handle it, no problem. That's right. If we have some, for example, some of our euphelia torch. They don't like to be bombarded too heavily. Mm -hmm. You can see they're off to the side. They're quite happy in that little region over there. That's beautiful. I really like the uh, But the they torches. get good flow rate, but nothing that's going to bombard them mm -hmm. and tear them off of their, their skeleton, which is really critical for these guys. Very nice. And then you have Same the with the Ganyapora. Yeah. yeah, these flower pots are doing excellent. You know, the, the reef waves really... Uh, make it simple because you can adjust the height on them. You can adjust the flow pattern. Um, you know they have the the regulators up top here, which yep. can be right onto your your uh, reef app. So the reef doser as well as our reef waves are basically used directly on the reef beat app, which is you know really handy for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have everything on the one. It tells me where things are. Uh, well, I can convenient. set everything up. I can change any of that as I need to on a daily basis. So real-time functions. How would you right now have programmed those two reef waves? Uh, so we've actually programmed this one at a high rate, about a two-second pulse. Okay. This one is 100% all the time. Okay. And what we've done with this secondary one over here is we have it on a, more of a random pattern. Mm -hmm. So this will also be pumping at 100% all the time, but it will slow itself down to I 50 see. or 30 or even as much as, you know, 20% up to back to 100%. So that's really important for some of our LPS that don't like to be bombarded. You can see the Gargonian, yep. only one side gross. The one side where we have a little softer flow mm. rate, the heavy flow rate coming from right to left, they have a little bit more of a challenge on the backside growing. I see. But they're fine, as long as they're not being directly ambushed by the flow all the time. I see. So, and then why, for, uh, for example, not have uh, random on both of them? Like, why do you think that this one so we chose to do that mainly because of the SPS over here mm. that are really, really flow-loving, turbulent-loving animals. Gotcha. So the more flow, the more turbulence, obviously we have to have it balanced correctly. We don't want to directly bombard them with mm -hmm. the flow, mm -hmm. but that's going to prevent a lot of them from stagnant, stale water. It's going to bring healthy, nutrient-rich water and take away the dirty water from them. And it's going to allow the polyps to really properly absorb their, their foods, take in their foods, take in their photosynthesis, and, and really develop uh, a good structure so that they're mm -hmm. they're thick and they're strong. We don't want them to be brittle. Yeah, I have a couple of brittle ones here. Um, I think it might be a green goblin. Yeah, it looks like so one of those guys. We actually but had a couple of tips that we trimmed off, and it's yeah. very soft. And so that will get stronger as That's you're similar. putting it in. The, yeah. yeah, this one is much much hardier. Mm -hmm. It's been around for a few months. 
but it, as you give it a little more flow rate, you'll find that those structures will actually get more dense and stronger as well. And so that's uh, the biggest reason I find for having the, the higher flow rate closer to the SPS area. Okay, I'm uh, learning some tricks here for my own uh, farm, but uh, look at the difference, right? It's pretty much, it's the same species, but exactly. like one is nice, vibrant, thick green, the other one is um, exactly. just getting there. Exactly. Kind of thing, so. But this is something that a lot of reefers, as we know, when we do collect and we do bring in new animals, it is going on the bottom. Yep. We're gently acclimating it to our system according to its needs. So yeah, that will that will eventually start looking like that. We just need to be patient as we know. So that well, the results certainly show. It's also great selection of fish. It's nice to see a yellow tang and the pyramid um, butterfly. The pyramid butterfly, uh, yep. Yeah. And then the sailfin and uh, purple tank and uh, blue tank, the hippo. Um, we were quite lucky with the uh, zebra somas, keeping them from fighting too much and, and being happy with each other. And we've even got the mandarin, which is beautiful. So uh, that means that there's enough copy pots. How long you've had this uh, mandarin here for? That mandarin's been in there for probably a year now. Okay, so, and he's nice and fat, so clearly not a problem. Well, Gary. Typically, we oh. like to use different types of pods for them. So this is one of the companies that we do carry. Yes. We always like to put in one or two of these bags, typically up to four times a year to support our, mm. our kopi pods and the other types of pods that the animals would eat. They're really good for the system, as we all know. Yes. So the one thing we didn't touch on was our lighting. Yes. So with our lighting systems, we're using the... Uh, Hydra 64 HDs. <laughs> Thank you. Those Thank are... You. Um, I'm the uh, ambassador for Aqua Illumination and... Um, they are fabulous lights. I love those lights. Uh, they have an excellent app, uh, acclimation modes, uh, yep. color spectrums, as you know, being the ambassador. Uh, you know, every single part of that light can be adjusted to accommodate the needs of the animals. Uh, visual light, uh, the, the par light, as yes. well as the per light. So really, really fantastic type of system. 64, 64, 64, over 110 gallons. It's really gonna cover our five foot spectrum. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get a good 45, 45, 45. We're not losing any overhanging lights. We're not yep. losing any lights towards the back. Another reason why we have them slotted this way as opposed to the left to right, which a lot makes, of makes people sense. like to do. No, I have uh, mine positioned exactly the same way and um, I really enjoy them. Uh, the only thing is uh, for mine, I actually use a visor um, and now there is a special visor which uh, you can see on treasurecorals.com where you can wrap uh, the light uh, and block it from somebody just kind of looking at I'm waiting at for it. my treasure coral guy to bring me a few to <laughs> display on my tank. I'm just wondering when he's going to make that. Oh, that's right. That's, that's my pal Dimitri. <laughs> That's right, that's right. So as soon as we get them available, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to, to make sure we talked about the lights. Is Dimitri's really done a fantastic job to give us these shell, these little shades for the lights and, uh, and make it a little bit softer for our eyes. Because as we know, sometimes it's a little bit annoying on our eyes. The blue lights aren't healthy for our eyes. So yeah, the, the, the shields that Dimitri makes are definitely something anybody should consider if they have these lights. Well, um, thank you. Uh, so Gary, thanks a lot for showing us around. This is a, a marvelous display, stunning display. And- uh, You're always so kind, Dimitri. <laughs> and um, it keeps changing, which I really like about, uh, it's not static. There's always some new coral. Like, I mean, certain things haven't changed in a while, like this uh, green leather coral in the back, but uh, a lot it's of- It's nice to have acros. some mature pieces that, that go along with the frags to give a lot of different ideas for people and also it's nice to see an adult animal yes. as opposed to just a part or a frag of it mm -hmm. it really gives you a nice sense of of the the size of it and, and what it can do to fill the space it looks so much nicer when it's mature we're going to come back in a year and we'll we'll see how this section is doing on us. Uh, 2023 uh, boxing day <laughs> so one of the cool things about a big l store is that this is kind of one place for you to pick up anything you want and get a full setup that you can take home pretty much on the same day. And whether you're into freshwater or saltwater, you've got everything starting with fish food and aquariums and filters. And to give you an idea of 
what is possible, you can actually see some of those displays at the store that are maintained by local staff. And I think we can focus on this saltwater aquarium in the front. So this is a very low key aquarium. Um, what I'm seeing here is a very large bubble tip anemone. Uh, you have some uh, frog spawn, you have some leather coral. So, and then we have a few fish here and as well the green star polyps, which is a really easy coral to keep. So it's a 13 gallon aquarium, which I think will look very nice in pretty much any kind of table, uh, any nook and cranny around the house, especially for somebody who just wants to get into the hobby. And here we've got all the different zoanthids and mushrooms. So it's themed a little bit differently, but also very easy to keep. Uh, and maintain and it's got a little skimmer right in here. What do we have here? So we have uh, lots of tabling acros in the front We've got some euphelia and the torches, which is kind of the hottest thing apparently nowadays uh, More LPS in the back. So let's maybe focus a little bit more on the acros because there's some really nice colors Over here. Where where'd you get all of these colonies from? These are direct supply through Valley Indonesia. I recognize some of the common strains that uh, you know show up at the stores mm -hmm. and in the hobbies. For example, this green goblin Anacarpora. Oh, you got the rainbow loom two over. Oh, this this two, right? Yeah. These pieces that you've cut right over here. Like, those what are, are actually, those? Um, from our display. It goes to show you um, how different certain things look under you know bluer light versus a little bit of a lighter light. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I know maybe can you say a few things about what do you think um, colors? matters in coloration for Acropora, like to get this picture-perfect uh, rainbow loom? Um, stability in, in, uh, in the water quality and uh, proper dosing, uh, getting the proper elements in there to get them to, to feed properly and, and to metabolize. So more like trace elements, uh, would okay. you say? Your trace elements along with your three-part, right? So The three-part and uh, what do you use for three-part and, um, and trace? Uh, in, well, in the coral flat and in the display, we're using the, the Fonamera uh, balling light set along yep. with their, their, the three trace colors. Very nice. So uh, I just shot a video uh, yesterday uh, with uh, Reef Paradise and we talked a lot about the uh, trace elements and the importance of that. And you can definitely see that it transfers well across the hobby. This is some really nice uh, deep water. What are those? This is a uh, little red dragon. Ferrari, or yeah, little red Ferraris, and some of the, some of the dragon species that the, they never ship them. We actually were able to get a whole bunch of them in this order. So very nice. And then moving over here, we've got tons of zoas. Yeah, uh, just so. some wild zoas that came in off the last order as well too. And uh, are these all uh, Ganyopora then? No, we got a, there's a couple of Alviporas in there as well. Alviporas as yeah. well. And the difference is the number of petals. Uh, yeah, petals on on the. On their heads. The, the Ganyopora has more petals on there. Okay, so yeah, so I guess this is more of a Ganyopora and then this is a little bit more of uh, Alveopora. Yeah, Alveopora. So yeah. Alveopora. We've got lots of hammers, lots of frog spawns. Um, I like uh, I like a lot of them. I like the price tags as well. Treasurecorals.com, uh, <laughs> check it out, folks. Uh, this is where you get those uh, price tags. So you've got tons of hammers, um, all the different varieties. Yeah, all sorts of colors this time around. I love it. This is uh, really looking good. And then Akens? Uh, Blastos, actually. Oh, this is a Blastos. Yeah, a Blastos. Typically, the Akens are a little bit smaller, yeah. I see. So A little bit more tighter knit, I find. These are beautiful colors uh, on, on, on those things as uh, well. The orange one in the middle is beautiful. Uh, this guy yeah. here? Yeah, this is, uh, this is very nice. So, and then uh, what about the water parameters in your system here? Like, what would you say you're keeping your um, nitrates and phosphates at? Uh, well, we'd like to keep them, w you know, within the recommended, but it, it, it jumps around so much because coral levels come up and down. Um, typically, the nitrates are usually around 12 to 15 in here. Mm -hmm. Phosphate, uh, as of late, it's bottomed out, triple zero. Wow. So it's so one of those things. Phosphate is three times a week right now. I'm just getting my feet wet with the uh, torches and I'm just overwhelmed with all the names and, you know, uh, there's like 20 different varieties. So it depends on what the vendor wants to call it, I guess. Exactly. So what do you, what do you call, um, let's say, those two varieties that we're kind of pointing at? Uh, I'm just calling them gold torches. Gold torches. Yeah, I so try not to get in the name game because if I get it wrong, then 
people get uh, upset, right? Oh yeah. Uh, I got these ones. I think I just picked up something like this from Demo, and uh, it was called New York Knicks. So that's, mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe it was like slightly different variation, but I cannot, I cannot really tell. Who is this guy? Like, I mean, this is a crazy color. Again, it's another one. That's, it's, it came in as a, you know, gold torch, so to say. Yeah. Yeah. That is gorgeous. Well, torches is where it's at uh, right now, and. I don't know, do you know the sale uh, prices for, um, or terms for the Boxing Day for uh, um, anybody yeah, well, who's coming up? Yeah, there's, well, the, it, it gets, the fish was 25%, 5% off, but the corals will be running at the minimum 30% off for, for Boxing Week. Now, Boxing Day, Boxing the Week. It's the same thing, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so even if you don't show up here on a Monday, uh, you still have time yeah, to... There, there will be some door crashes that are gonna be, Ooh, you know, door to be crashes. had. Tons and tons of cleaner shrimp ready for Boxing Day. Ooh. It's going to be one of our door crashers. What's uh, what's going to be the price for uh, the cleaner shrimp? Uh, uh, for well, these big guys are going to be twenty four ninety nine, I believe. Black storm clouds. Yeah, okay. These guys are coming out of Taiwan. Typically, you see them coming out of you know. There's a couple of guys in Valley that do them, and you know, Pro Aquatics in the states as well too, which you know has another very nice strain of uh, black storm clown, which we have as well. Those are beautiful. They don't even look like clowns. Uh, or uh, they look like a mix of a PlayStation 5 and uh, a Stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I do like a lot is this, uh, these urchins. These are um, decorator urchins? Uh, those are the, what they call those the, uh, the orange spine urchin, colored cake urchin. Beautiful. Um, and these are the ones that will pick up any uh, detritus, not detritus, but like loose pieces of, ru of rubble. You know, they'll take your frags with you, yeah. take snail shells with you, hermit crabs for a ride. I have two of those in one of my aquariums, not my farm, and uh, I really love those guys because... Oh, they're uh, horses for algae. I call them the Roombas of um, my aquarium. Okay, so we've got here the peppermint basslet and the black cap basslet. This is a beautiful... Uh, guys, why are they held separately from kind of the it's rest of the aquarium? They just them so they don't go hiding under a rock. Yeah, they are quite nice. And uh, this is good for a small aquarium, like a nano reef, would you say? I'd probably go mid-size on them, like about 50 gallons. 50 gallons, so. Well, that's nice. And are they jumpers or uh, less so? Uh, they can jump, yes. They can so jump. So we've right? got little lids on the, on the container so they don't escape. Nice. And then right. the other door crasher that we have for yes. Boxing Week would be the uh, captive bred Yasha gobies. Ooh, that's been a while since I've seen those. Um, yeah, we can see them over there. Um, do you have the shrimp to for them to go with, or? Um... Uh, unfortunately, we don't because of the, the storm. The flight canceled. That's right. So, it, so. Well, you can always pick up the goby now and then get the pistol oh, shrimp uh, it should later. By the end so. of the week. Or I love it. Week. I may have to pick some up for myself as well because uh, I'm a big fan of small fish, and um, sometimes even like I like to sit up close to the aquarium. And this, as well as the yellow watchman. Oh, this is a, one of my favorite uh, fish. And we have an Achilles tang. Okay, let's see the Achilles tang. This is this is the guy. Yeah. Oh, that guy is gorgeous. Uh, very colorful. Um, I think he can definitely fatten up over time, but he's not oh, definitely. Uh, too thin either. Um, this, I assume, he eats. Oh yeah. Thanks a lot for inviting us. Uh, it was a great tour. Uh, I wish you a great uh, Boxing Day event. And uh, I know it lasts a whole week, so don't miss this opportunity. And this is going to be very exciting for everybody.